I want to first thank the session organizers for planning this session and, and including a paper from across the pond. And hopefully I can provide some, some insight into um, what we're doing at uh, Brigham Young University. Um, for reference, Brigham Young University is located in Provo, Utah, in the Western United States. It would be in that gray swath between the Nazis and the Japanese, if you saw the map, the crime of in the middle, so we might be safe. Um, <laughs> uh, archaeologists at BYU are currently working in the American Southwest, the Great Basin and the Colorado Plateau, Petra, Jordan, Chihuahua, Mexico, and Chiapas, Mexico as well. Uh, inspired by McFerrin and Dibble's attempts to use laptops uh, and other sensitive equipment in digital in, uh, equipment in Egypt, my colleague and I sought to improve our digital data collection methods. This is from oh, a year ago, I wish. Um, <laughs> our efforts to use Panasonic Toughbooks to digitally draw stratigraphic profiles using Adobe Illustrator were largely successful, uh, but we realized quickly that we had a lot to learn. Um, today, I would like to share what we have learned about teaching our archaeoinformatics class to the students. I admit that I fall into what Huggett et al. talk about with the anxiety discourse and the uncertainty between using the correct term archaeoinformatics versus digital archaeology. Unfortunately, I maintain this anxiety by using both terms interchangeably today. <clears throat> In this paper, I will discuss our recent initiative to improve our digital archaeological methods, our successes and challenges with teaching archaeoinformatics at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Uh, and I will address the questions asked by the session organizers. I conclude with two thoughts. One, teaching digital archaeology really necessitates a hands-on experiential learning approach. And two, involving students from other backgrounds, including computer science, engineering, information technology, and others, provides a richer synergistic experience for archaeological students. Our first foray into digital archaeology uh, data collection developed into what we now call the Archaeological Digital Initiative. The ADI's mission is to incorporate state-of-the-art technology uh, both hardware and software into archaeological and museum practices in order to streamline data collection, reduce redundancy and error, improve efficiency, and identify patterns in data previously not visible or recognized. In addition, we are continually researching innovative and uh, solutions for computer-aided data collection in archaeological fieldwork. This consortium of individuals includes faculty, staff, and students from archaeology, museum studies, computer science, engineering, and uh, IT groups. The ADI provides an exciting and uh, new dimension for us that not only teaches current digital archaeological methods to students, but encourages them in an experiential environment to learn and develop the next generation of digital methods. In the winter of 2014, we started an archaeoinformatics class that focused on teaching both undergraduate and graduate students computer-aided digital technologies, but again with an emphasis on hands-on uh, experiential learning, using these methods in the real world. We started by practicing data collection using GPS units, total stations, and UASs, kind of the basics, the, uh, the fundamentals. Uh, we believe that you really cannot assume that students know how to properly collect digital data uh, based on their experience. We constantly talk about the slogan, garbage in, garbage out. They soon learn the importance of this slogan once they attempt to process the data they've collected themselves. Data processing methods taught include basic GIS, uh, using ArcMap, Events and Map Publisher, uh, Trimble products, um, as well as computer, computer vision photogrammetry using um, Agisoft's Metashape. I'm still trying to get used to that new name. Um, and as, as well as Adobe products, including Photoshop and Illustrator, and then UAS flight software, um, including most of the DJI products. Um, as well as some basics behind geophysical data collection and processing. Statis statistical analyses are taught in a, in a separate course. I want to talk about some of the successes that we have experienced. So successes from the ADI include both hardware and software solutions that were developed. For example, our collaboration with IT students 
produced a portable rugged internet we call ARCnet. It's a really creative name, I know. Um, these access points are solar powered and allow digital devices to connect and upload data to a central server in, in our excavation trailer. Another result from the API is SolarArc. I apologize. I didn't take the video. The SolarArc is a mobile solar panel system used to power all of the digital devices that we use to collect the data. Uh, this is um, mounted on a two, -ax, two axis system and it's servo driven and it gives us a lot more efficiency in our power collection. So you can see it uh, rotating there by tracking the sun. Well, some is actually manual rotating to show off. Um, these, are, these platforms, uh, or so finally, we've developed two data collection applications. Again, surveyor and excavator. We're working on our creativity. We're really not getting it yet. but. Um, Surveys, Surveyor is a platform independent, well, they're both platform web uh, apps that are independent of a platform uh, and can run on mobile devices as well as on a desktop, um, which has an equivalent for managing data. Working on these projects has helped us recognize the need to teach students the basic skills associated with digital archaeology, including both the hardware and the software side. Measuring the success of the archaeoinformatics class, Jump to one more there. Um, is a bit more difficult, but we have over several years began to refine our content, uh, presentations, and hand on uh, experiences for the students. Initially, the class was only taught to graduate students, but growing interest from our undergraduates convinced us to open the class to them as well. This is nearly double the size of the class, but we feel that exposing undergraduates. Uh, to these best practices and methods in digital archaeology establishes good habits at the beginning, and as well as helps them to recognize the importance of accuracy in their own data collection projects and their own research. Some of the challenges we face uh, with both the ADI and archaeoinformatics class uh, include increasing class sizes, uh, which makes the hands-on approach a bit more challenging, but especially when teaching uh, total stations, GPS, and drones. Um, we want all students the opportunity to collect digital data with these instruments, but they're often limited to a few minutes um, per instrument. We are considering limiting the class sizes to around 20 students to make this a little more feasible. Um, and then offering the class more frequently during, uh, throughout each, each semester. Process, processing the data um, using software and various packages also has been difficult due to costs. Um, we're lucky at BYU to have access to uh, Esri's ArcGIS suite as well as the Adobe products via university license, but other applications are too expensive uh, to provide a license for each student. Finally, due to time constraints and student experience, we can only cover really the basics of digital archaeology. Uh, we are able to expose students to a wide variety of topics, but we really can't delve into the more advanced parts of the class or the content. So just to ask, just to answer some of the questions uh, set for this session. Um, question one was, what are the digital basics that all students should, should be equipped with at the BA level? I suggest the following are useful. Digital cartography and understanding GIS basics, computer vision photogrammetry, collecting and processing GPS and total station data. More importantly, students need to learn to think logically and critically, as well as understand the fundamentals behind the software and the hardware to avoid what Ken uh, Kavame calls the black box syndrome. Um, they will never know the miracle of a robotic total station if they've never used um, you know, a farmer's level or, or a chain and tape to map, to map. The second question is how much further should an MA level course teach? Our class readings and lectures are the same for both undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and the graduate students are required to uh, write an additional research paper as well as present to the class on these topics. Uh, our previous graduate student only versions of this class also required a team project that worked and revolved around solving a specific problem associated with digital archaeology. The solar arc example that you saw was a product of, of one of those projects. Our first year, we challenged the class to find a solution um, 
to power these devices using that solar uh, system. The third question, what courses have been particularly successful? Which ones have failed of which, and for what reasons? Um, although we've only taught the one class, the Archaeoinformatics course over the last few years, I can say that uh, the classes are more effective when they're experiential. Any hands-on activities make them much better received and understood. The final question is, how do students accept the challenge? Overall, we found that most students um, are who are serious about a career in archaeology uh, have met the challenge and excelled in many ways. And those who are not committed tend to fall behind rather quickly, but especially when more complex topics are introduced. In conclusion, we are hopeful that both the ADI and the Archaeoinformatics class build on BYU's legacy of preparing students for many opportunities uh, that await them after they leave the university. The ADI has already provided outstanding opportunities for undergraduate and graduate students, as well as an opportunity for alumni to return and invest back into the education of their others. Students have been involved in the ADI from the beginning and, and have contributed to the execution and application of their own ideas. The idea for the remote wireless network, as well as surveyor and excavator apps were results of teacher-student collaboration. Their development and execution follow this pattern as well. The ADI and archaeoinformatics class are both intellectually enlarging for the students involved, and they help students prepare for their bachelor's and master's degrees by providing a width and breadth through the experiential learning that develops from digital archaeology skills. Furthermore, both programs promote a habit of lifelong learning for the students involved, as well as build a career in a team environment dedicated to improving methods in their field of study. The vision and collaboration of students and faculty from multiple disciplines, combined with crucial donor support, have created an atmosphere of excitement uh, and energy in our program. Students and faculty involved with the ADI and the Archaeoinformatics class are seeing new possibilities and asking new questions. They are finding freedom to use their imagination and ask what if. As we continue to study the lives of those in the past, we will look forward to the future equipped with powerful new tools and collaborative and synergistic environments. Thank you.